In part 6 of the Unit 3 notes, we will be covering isotopes. Isotopes are atoms of this, with the same number of protons, which means they are the same element, but a different number of neutrons. This difference in neutrons will result in a different mass number. In spite of these differences, isotopes of an atom have the same chemical behavior. Hydrogen has three different isotopes. Protium is the most common, which is 99.99% of all hydrogen atoms on Earth, and it contains one proton and zero neutrons. Deuterium contains one proton and one neutron. Tritium contains one proton and two neutrons. You will not have to know special names for isotopes for all elements, but you are expected to know these three, so protium, deuterium, and tritium. The mass for your isotope may not match with the mass that is found on the periodic table. So it is important that if you are given a mass in a problem, that is the mass that you should be using. So for example, the mass of carbon on the periodic table is 12.01. So if you were around that, it would end up with 12. But there is a var variation of carbon called carbon-14, which you can see up here. So carbon-14 has additional neutrons. There are a few different ways that you can differentiate between different types of isotopes. The first is hyphen notation. For hyphen notation, you write the name of the element, then a hyphen, and then the mass number, which is the protons and neutrons added together. So for example, tritium, which had one proton and two neutrons, you would write hydrogen, a hyphen, and then three. An isotope symbol, is where you write the elemental symbol with the atomic number in the bottom left corner and the mass number in the top left corner. Now, the isotope symbol gives you the most amount of information since you are also given the atomic number. So this one is sometimes a little more useful if you're trying to find the number of protons, neutrons, and electrons, since you don't have to look at a periodic table as well. If you were trying to find that information when given hyphen notation, Unless you had the atomic number memorized, you would need to reference a periodic table in order to figure that out. For our first checkpoint question, you're going to use your knowledge of counting protons, neutrons, and electrons, and your knowledge of isotopes to answer each of the following. So first up, how many protons, neutrons, and electrons are there in chlorine-37? The first thing you would need to do here is look at a periodic table unless you have the atomic number for chlorine memorized. Chlorine is atomic number 17, so that means you're going to have 17 neutrons. Sorry, 17 protons. Now the hyphen notation shows you the mass number, so we have a total mass of 37 and 17 protons within that mass. So if we subtract those two, we can see that we're going to have 20 neutrons. Now, it doesn't say anything here about this also being an ion. There's no evidence that there's a charge anywhere, so we can assume that this is neutral. So my electrons are going to be 17 since they would match up with the protons. Now, in our next example, this one will be a little bit simpler because we are given the isotope symbol, which gives us both numbers that we need, so we don't have to reference the periodic table this time. The protons are going to be equal to 10 because we can see the atomic number is 10. Our neutrons, we're going to subtract. Now another thing that's nice about this format is that it's kind of set up like a subtraction problem already. So 22 minus 10 would be 12. So there are going to be 12 neutrons. Since this is also electrically neutral, it doesn't say anything about a charge up in this corner, we're going to have 10 protons. For our next checkpoint question, we are going to be going in the opposite direction. So now we are given the mass number and the atomic number, and we want to write out the isotope symbol. So for this one, the first thing we need to do is figure out what element we're talking about. And we have an atomic number of 9. So if you use a periodic table, that matches up with fluorine. The atomic number goes in the bottom corner, and the mass number goes on top. 
This time they gave us the mass number directly, so I don't need to add anything together. If I was given the protons and neutrons, I could add that together to find the mass number. Number two, we are trying to determine the hyphen notation. So this is where we are going to write out the entire name of the element, a hyphen, and then the mass after it. 12 protons means an atomic number of 12. So the name of that element is magnesium. Then we're going to include our hyphen. Now from here, we need the total mass. and We have not been given the mass number. I do know I have 12 protons and 13 neutrons. So I'm going to add those together for a total mass of 25. So this right here would be the hyphen notation. If you wrote down mg-25, that would be wrong. So you would have to write out the entire name of the element. In nature, most elements are found as a mixture of isotopes. Potassium has three known isotopes. So if we look at the percentage breakdown, most potassium is potassium-39, and that's 93.26% abundant. Potassium-40 is 6.73% abundant, and potassium-41 is 0.01% abundant. The percentage breakdown determines the average atomic mass, which is what you can find on the periodic table. Now this is a weighted average of the atomic masses. So the percent abundance is a contributing factor into what the final answer will be. The formula that you can use to determine the average atomic mass is shown here. So you're gonna multiply the percentage times the mass for as many isotopes as there are. So in this formula, I just have two but then you can also see our dot, dot, dot. So there could be as many isotopes as you need, and you could just continue to fill this out. So let's take a look at going through a problem where you would have to do this. So we're trying to find the average atomic mass for boron. We're given the percentage, and we're given the mass, the percentage, and then the mass. So our average atomic mass is equal to the percentage from isotope one. So it said I had 19.90%. Now if I have a percentage function on my calculator, I could type it in as is, but if not, you can convert this into a decimal form. And all you have to do to do that is slide your decimal two spots to the left or divide by 100. So I'm gonna multiply by 0 0.1990. I'm gonna multiply that by the mass. 10.013 grams per mole. Next, I have a percentage of 80.10%, which is 0 0.8010 if I go into a decimal form again. I'm just going two spots to the left. That is going to be multiplied by 11.009 grams per mole. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to find the individual answer to each of these two, and then I'm going to add that together to get my final answer. And if we do that, our total mass is going to be 10.81 grams per mole. So that is the average atomic mass, taking into account the percentage breakdown for each isotope. All right, for this checkpoint, fluorine has two known isotopes, fluorine-18 and fluorine-19. Based on the average atomic mass found on the periodic table, which of these two isotopes would be most abundant? Now, if we look at the symbol on the periodic table, we can see that the weighted average is extremely close to 19. So that tells us that we are more likely to have a lot of fluorine-19 as opposed to fluorine-18, since it's skewed in that direction. So our answer here would be fluorine 19. That one is more abundant because the average is closer to that mass. That concludes part six of the unit three notes. When we come back for part seven, we're going to be discussing the mole and molar mass conversions.